Hi, welcome back. One of the reasons I love my job is just the array of things I get to talk about and you get to hear about. And we're going to talk now about beatboxing. In case you don't know, it's the art of making music with the mouth, the lips, the tongue and the voice. It started as an underground culture, but beatboxers are fast becoming the new rock stars of music. Hundreds of fans expected to attend the UK Beatbox Championships here in London this weekend. In a moment, I'll be joined by two members of the Beatbox Collective, but first we just had to show you what they can do. Have a look. So now it's time to take it back to the roots, roots. <laughs> That's the sounds of the beast. <laughs> So cool, right? That was the Beatbox Collective. With me are two members, Rupert Aldridge, a.k.a. Bass Six, and Dean Hosny, a.k.a. MC Zany. Guys, right. amazing to see you, and I'm so looking forward to hearing you perform. I've got some pretty basic journalistic questions. <laughs> the who, what, why, where, kind of, you know, first thing you learn at journalism school. And I'm going to start by saying, Rupert, why? Why do you beatbox? Uh, it's always been something that we've enjoyed expressing, so why limit yourself to doing something that you don't want to do and we follow our passion we've uh, we've managed to work really hard and we've been we, I don't know it's one of the most fun things to do just expressing in any way I can see that it's fun but Dean how did it all start I mean were you a kid and realized you could do um, really cool stuff with your voice well, it's, it's, it's like a, any other instrument you don't wake up and suddenly you can beatbox if, if you if you pick up a guitar you can't play it but then if you play guitar for a week, you can play a few notes. If you play guitar for a few years, you can play a few songs. It's exactly the same as a beatbox as an instrument. But I guess it started as, um, I used to be a drummer, I had the love for music, so that's where the love started. But then I heard another beatboxer, and that was like, wow, you can actually be yourself and, and beatbox on the main stage without having any other instrumentation in the back. You can do it yourself. And now, as it's progressed, you can do it with people and groups. And Did you have that same kind of realisation, Rupert, when you were younger too? Yeah, I mean, always sort of doing sound effects, doing impressions of teachers, and <laughs> I mean, again, even some, you know, when you got the laugh, or whether people go, wow, or, you know, whatever it was. That's that confidence uh, instilled with you by others, or by gatekeepers, or teachers, and I think that's always actually a great thing, just to be able to pursue your passion. Um, it's so, a again, talent, though, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of technical... Uh, yes, I mean like everything you build up your muscle memories you learn different techniques We learn so much speech and language from all the other beatboxes in the community worldwide um, And so again, that's the way we keep advancing and again now YouTube's about you can look up anything how to but you can watch a million beatbox videos and just keep advancing leveling up just by Well practice. our viewers don't need YouTube because we have the two of you. You've got some microphones. <laughs> can you break it down for us a bit Rupert? Show us how it's done. Um, so there are uh, a whole load of layers of beatboxing. Again, you can use all the human anatomy, all for free, no electricity and no <laughs> evil. But again, there's a very basic thing, just by using any sound, we believe every sound is a good sound. Put it into a mathematical formula and it equals music. So simply you can use your teeth and go <coughs> Your dentist doesn't advise that and neither will your mum. But what I'm going to show you now is the fastest teeth in the world. Here we go. That's just the teeth. But with the teeth, the tongue and the mouth, you can go... We call that the click roll in the beatboxing world. And with the teeth, the tongue, the mouth, the nose, and the throat, all together it sounds a little bit like this. And that's how to break it down into throat, nose, everything. Wow, it's so cool. <laughs> Dean, I'm going to get you to pick up your microphone as well. Do you have like a favourite thing you like to Ooh, do? That you I, I do with. like doing sound effects. Um, it's kind of inspired by kind of Police Academy, the Michael Winslow. He used to do the siren, which was like... <laughs> or like an instrument. <laughs> so there's like various stuff you can do. It's not just beats and it's not just um, instruments. It's sound effects and, and how you put it together to make music. And It becomes or, yeah. a kind of full musical performance, though, when you perform together, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, musical performance or theatre performance, you can... 
do physical theatre, you can you don't need to have props because you can act out what you're doing. So you can you can be like like um, or birds, like it's, it's it's limitless to what what your imagination can do. And because of the involvement of technology, there's new sounds in music that we didn't have before. And now beatboxers are hearing these electronic sounds and replicating them on the microphone. So it's but you just did the birds there, Rupert. Mm. I mean, so just it was a skylark. A skylark. <laughs> so are you constantly inspired just every day with Absolutely. what you're hearing? Absolutely. Yeah, right um, even one of our sketches with the Beatbox Collective, uh, which we'll be doing actually on the 26th of January uh, with the London A Cappella Festival, we do a whole sketch where we show a life in the day of, and it's all our surrounding sounds. Whether it is going outside, and you know, when you're on the tube, you hear. Whatever sound it is and everything, we react to it and we can obviously put it and recreate it into music. Uh, but we love to play with sounds and obviously, you know, it even plays with other people's imagination when you can wind people up on the tube and do that and control 50 people. Dean, in the clip we saw of you guys, mm -hmm. the crowd were really into it and it was a good crowd as well. Are you seeing sort of it becoming more and more popular to attend this? Yeah, I, I guess it's such a live element. It's because if when you see a beatboxer on stage and you see them performing, um, I guess the, the general reaction is like, are they, are they doing that? Or yeah, is, is that for real? Yeah. yeah, so I guess that's, for us, that's amazing if somebody does that because that means we're doing our job correctly. So I, I think there's definitely uh, such a, an enjoyment for, as a fan, as a spectator, to watch live beatboxing. Yeah, we're just seeing the crowd here. They really are enjoying it. And yeah. so that's one side of it, the growing popularity of the fans. Mm -hmm. What about convincing people to take it up? I mean, I know both oh. of you work with young people. It must, you just have to do a few of these things and they're like, that's so cool, I want to do yeah, that. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess it's, 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 it's like, you, we work with a lot of youth centres and, and children and it is a form of expression. Some of them, it's not just beatboxing, it's confidence as well. Like uh, Rupert was saying before, um, you, some of them don't know how, they're not comfortable getting up on stage or performing or just speaking in front of people. But when you get them how to beatbox, that's how they, they translate, yeah. yeah. But Rupert, I wonder if it's an easier sell than going in with a cello. Uh, no, 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 absolutely, you're absolutely right, because you know what, loads of people are going, God, they've never reacted like that. I mean, ukulele class every week, yes. it's like going, because all you need is the human anatomy, and it's a, a call and response. It's, it's like dancing, it's the same sort of thing. You just say, move your arm this way, or uh, uh, you know, raise your voice like this. And again, it's a two-way thing. It's, it really sort of, uh, is a great vehicle to be able to teach, actually. And what do you say to them about the amount of just practice that's involved? How yeah, long it takes? Proper prior to planning prevents piss ball performances. Yeah. yeah. All the seven P's of life, you know, so you've got to make sure practice is in there and, yeah, you build up your muscle memory. How much a day would you guys do? Ooh, I guess when you first start beatboxing, that's when you're really, like, hungry for it. So you can be beatboxing for hours a day. But I guess the, the more, the more you, you, you develop, it's more fine-tuning. So oh, I'm just going to practice my snares today and just go... <coughs> For a little bit, or just going to practice a different sound effect, or just one routine that you just keep practicing. It's just—it's like learning an instrument, pretty much. I mean, it's been so great to talk to you, but I think all of us in the studio <laughs> upstairs watching want to hear some more beatboxing. Do you might guys mind having a little jewel just to wrap up the program? Let's great to have you with us on GMT. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, guys. Cool. It's the Beatbox Collective Basics and MC Zany up like this. <laughs> Hit it. Worldwide.